My people, my people, my people, what is going on? And welcome to the My People Podcast, where we talk with influencers in business, fashion, and lifestyle. I'm your host, The Wealthy Guy. I'm a men's style expert, custom clothier, and published photographer. So this week on episode five of the My People Podcast, we are here with Joseph Wilson II. Now, Joseph Wilson II is currently the Associate Director of Employer and Alumni Relations at Columbia University here in New York City. So prior to working at Columbia, Joe has worked in higher education previously, working at St. Joseph's College and at Baruch College. We're both graduates of Baruch. Hey, Baruch. Bearcats. Um, Before transitioning into... Um, higher ed, Joe worked in in banking and financial services. So looking forward to talking to him a little bit about that. Um, and despite being in, in his role in financial services, he found himself gravitating to volunteering at various professional development events for students and professionals. So being a first generation college student and a first generation corporate American, that's his term right there, y'all. This was yet another world that he had to navigate without proper guidance. He leverages his knowledge and experience of corporate and 10 years of commitment to the National Association of Black Accountants, NAVA, uh, to lead seminars on various professional development topics such as networking, public speaking, and interviewing. Joe has a BA in public administration from Baruch with a minor in Black Studies in Communication, and he's continuing his education as a part-time master's student um, at the Teachers College, Columbia University. That was a lot, Joe. That was a lot. I know. So, <laughs> I know. I'm long-winded. I'm long-winded. Right, right. So, Joe, firstly, I just want to say thank you for being with us Most today. Um, I've known <clears throat> Joe for a good a good amount of time. Yeah, so, yeah. A good number of years now. We are both, you know, graduates of Baruch. We both were presidents of the NAVA chapter yeah. at, at Baruch, um, and we both worked at the same bank for, yeah, 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 yeah. for some for some time yeah. before he, you know, went into, you know, a career of um, giving back. Yeah. More. Let's, say, let's, call it, <laughs> <laughs> let's call it back. So, so let's say that. So, Joe. Yes, sir. Who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. So, uh, I am... A son of immigrants. Yeah. Um, what country? My dad is from Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. And my mom is from Guyana, South America, not Ghana, Guyana, Africa, or <laughs> Guyana. Yeah. Um, I know people tend to get, get that mixed up sometimes. Right, um, right. So th- they they migrated here, had me and my brother. Um, so I'm older brother. I'm also married. Two years coming up in August. So, you know, we're looking to, to celebrate. It's it's a it's a wonderful time. Right. Um, as as you mentioned, I'm a graduate of Baruch College, current um, master's student at Teachers College, and I'm I love to give back or love to find ways to, to give back and definitely try to help um, black men yep. um, advance, whether it's from high school to college, right. college to corporate and throughout the corporate scene as well. Right. So um Firstly, you got that gift idea for your wife. You 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 know you can't mess that up. No, all no. right. <laughs> Gifts are already already stored, um, hidden away right. in our apartment somewhere. So okay, good, good, good. She good. won't be looking for it anytime soon. All right, good because you, I definitely don't want to, you know, see you again and you be <laughs> <laughs> and you in the doghouse. No, no, no. You, okay, but no, I'm glad. You know, it's it's. You know, August is is literally tomorrow, right? Two days away. Two days, yeah. right? So, so it's good that you you know you you got everything sorted. Yep. Um, so I really wanted to have you on the podcast because I think that your story is one you know th- obviously that I wanted to share. Um, because you know what 
the wealthy guy and the brand, right? It's about fashion. Um, it's about entrepreneurship. It's about lifestyle. But I think, you know, bringing you on, I wanted to bring you on because you do bring an aspect of lifestyle that we don't necessarily uh, talk about that often, which is uh, the education yeah, of yeah. black males um, and the higher education yeah. of black males, mm -hmm. right? Like I talked to, um, I had my, my nephew uh, interning with me for the summer and, you know, I said to him, you know, he, he's going into 11th grade. Mm -hmm. So after that 12th grade and he graduates and I'm like, what do you want to do? I didn't say, are you going to go to college? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I said, what are you going to do after high school? And his response was, I want to work for the MTA. Right. Which kind of caught me off guard, but didn't mm. because I'm seeing uh, more and more that some of our black males are not wanting to go to college. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And I think that you've done a lot of work around that. Yeah. Um, so I, so, so firstly talk, tell us how you got into your higher ed work. Yeah, sure. So, um, my first story and kind of often I'm like referred to this and this was at Baruch, uh, sophomore year, spring semester. Yeah. And that typically this is when, when individuals meet with their advisor right. to go over major choices and, and all that stuff. So I, the, the counselor I got, um, was a white male. Yep. And you know, you go to Baruch, everybody wants to major in accounting, some type of business. Right. Looking to go into Ziggler. Right. And in that session, he literally told me, you need to switch your major. You need to, you're not going to get into business. Right. I'm like, with these grades right. or, or at all. And as an 18, 19 year old, you don't, you take that for your heart. Right. You know, because you, you, you're in high school. Right. You have, you have these dreams, you have these aspirations. Right. And then to have somebody shut, shut that down. Right. Um, so me not knowing any better. Yep. Went along and switched my major. Right. But after some time, I, I wanted to prove him wrong. So right. I was, um, as Drake said, out for revenge. Right. <laughs> you know, looking right. for revenge and everything that I did. Yep. Was to get into the corporate sphere. Right. And whether that was through networking, doing community service events to to meet with managing directors, directors, hiring directors, HR people, analysts, anybody that that um, I could I could meet with right. and use my name as a brand in order to get my job. That is that is good and is sim is similar to kind of my story in that you know. My my degrees in history, mm -hmm. right? And people were like, "What are you gonna do with that?" That is a classic question, right? That what are you What question. are you gonna do with that? And I'm like, okay, well, I want to go into the the financial services space. What? Yeah. What do you What do you mean? Like, you know? And then especially coming from a school like Baruch, it's just like, how are you gonna get through when there's all of these qualified people? Yep. With accounting and finance, you know, that are pursuing accounting and finance degrees. Yeah. Why, why, why do you want to go here? Because that's what I want. Yeah. And why can't I have or do what I, why do I have to be boxed in? Yeah, that's true. Right? To, to, to something. So go ahead. So, so like if you think about it, right, um, a lot of the, and um, I went to, I went to a conference and, and somebody told me, he was like, do you know, what degree, what what bachelor's degree Jamie Diamond has? Because we were both interviewing for um, J.P. Morgan. Right. At the time, he was for a, a different a different sector, and I was for operations. He asked me, "What bachelor's degree does um does does Jamie Diamond have?" And I think I think he got he has a either a bachelor's in history or in or in like philosophy or right. in like the fine arts. Yep. And that stuck with me. Yep. And and going forward, a lot of people were like, "Well, if you look at these top top execs, 
their their undergraduate degrees aren't in accounting, aren't in right. finance, because they're being groomed to lead people. Right. They're being groomed to to look at a situation and not look at the numbers, but right. how to um, handle the 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 entire situation. Right. Yeah, that that's a really good point. Yeah. And how do you think? How do you think? How do you think? How do you communicate? Yeah. Right, and and what I would always tell people is companies need diversity in thought. Mm -hmm. Right, like that you can't true. just have everyone who is numbers focused and do every job. Yeah. Right, like they have there has to be people who think with other parts of of their brain. Um, and you know, to your other point of, there are so many leaders, presidents, mm -hmm. CEOs that have liberal arts degrees. Yep. You know, and a lot of people don't know that. They just think, okay, I want to go into a bank or banking or yep. financial services and I have to study financial accounting. Yep. I yep. knew that I wasn't good <laughs> in that. Like, who? You, you have to be smart about stuff. I wish I, I wish I, you know, <laughs> embraced that right. earlier. Right, yeah. yeah. Like, I, uh, didn't graduate high school one time because I failed math. Mm. So I kind of went in with, you know, yes, I want to work in business, but I'm doomed if I yeah. study finance or accounting because yeah. it's just not interesting to me. Yeah. You and know? Um, so I said, I have to study something that's interesting to exactly. me. Exactly. So, so, you know, a lot of these execs, they're all, um, they'll have their, their undergraduate degree in the liberal arts, right. which teaches you how to think, how to properly assess information. And then, and then their master's degree is in, is in, um, finance or right. in, or something business related right? to, to kind of advance them into that next phase, right. phase of, um, um, of their career. Right. So, you know. Um, me growing up in a, in a Caribbean uh, household, it was literally, well, you, you have an, uh, you go get an accounting degree right. to become an, an accountant. I think the, 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 the thought in the, in the Caribbean community or in the, um, underrepresented community right. is that whatever you major in, that's what you're going to get your job in. Right. Right. And that's, n that's necessarily not the point. Right. Um, some, some individuals, they major in, in accounting and they work in it at an accounting firm, right. but they're in the HR department, right? You know, and, and then you have people that like us, your history on public affairs, right. both worked in financial services right. and then transition into That's somewhere right. else, yeah. you know, and, and if you're able to kind of, um, leverage your degree, regardless of, of of the position you're going for, yep. able to um, emphasize those um, transitional and those um, um, transferable skills, right. you'll be fine. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. And I think that, um, and you're doing this work already, I think that there has to be more of us saying to other black youth, right, people yeah, in yeah, college, yeah. going into college, that there is, for lack of a better term, more than one way to skin a cat. Exactly. Right? Like, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know? So, um, so I just think that, yeah, people, and, and for that to always be the number one question from people who work in companies, as well as from people looking to go into banking yeah. that are like, huh? Wait, how'd you get in there? Yep. yep. You know? And it's like... Yeah. Listen. I, when I changed my major, you know, my parents were were literally just like, "Well, why? Right. What kind of job are you going to get? Right. You know. Um. Of course, that's that's a valid concern. Right. But um, I saw being being um a student while you already graduated. Right. That 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 the path was was already paid in right. terms of having a liberal arts degree or, or a non-business degree going into business. Right. And then to finish my story, the reason, the reason why I, my focus kind of changed into, um, you know, wanting to help people right. wasn't because of the interaction, um, um, with that advisor. 
He literally told me no. Right. And didn't offer an alternative path in order to get to what I eventually wanted. Right. You know, and um, from from that interaction on, I personally said, I'm not going to allow, you know, someone else to kind of dictate where where I'm going to go in terms of my career. Right. Yeah. And I think that um, more people need to understand that that is that's okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Th- you know, okay. it's, it's um, also think it's a community thing too. Yeah. You know, um, we're, we're, we're bent on, you know, saying, well, you know, you need to, you need to go to college. Right. You need to do this. You need to do that. But you have so much students that, that are not prepared from high school to go into college. Right. And, you know, um, as a recruiter in my past life, you know, right. I would recommend students if they didn't, <laughs> If they necessarily weren't doing all that well in, in high school and they weren't going to come in, get into college straight away, go to a community college for, for a year, for, for two years. Get the feel of college and then transfer to, to a four-year school. And, and that way, you, you understand what college is about. You're, you're able to, to kind of navigate. And uh, But yeah, no, that, that definitely, uh, you know, makes sense. So... When you started your work in higher ed, right, what were some of the things that you were surprised to see in terms of the students that you were working with? That I would say every student is an individual. Yep. And um, I should say more so students of color. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I think... I think I learned a lot of that from from my Black Studies courses. Right. You know, um, where you read books, you read articles of of um, researchers lumping um, students of color together. Right. And not really understanding that well, every student has a background. Right. Um, you know, you have students that that come into college that are dealing with mental health issues, that yep. are dealing with homelessness. That are dealing with um, domestic violence, yep. and and they come they come to your institution, kind of mask it, and then go on. Right. But you could sometimes you could tell based yep. on their on, on their grades. But um, for me, I always had an open door policy. Right. Um, there were times <laughs> students students would stop by my office and say, "Joe, can we go for a walk and talk? Yep. Can we just talk outside of your office?" Just one on one, right? And I think um, a lot of schools they, they have safe zones and, yep. and, and safe rooms where 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 you could go speak speak with a with a with an individual in the school as as a student confidential. Of course, if anything is serious or life threatening, right. you have to report it. But I think the availability and realizing that every student is an individual and, yep. and they have different personalities, they have different needs, they have different wants, yep. they have different aspirations. And you have to, as an as a higher ed administrator, cater to all of these different needs. Right, right. And a lot of times, uh, in, in a lot of schools, that is not available. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's not mm-hmm. available for us, right? And, and before I used to always ask myself, why... Do so many young black people drop out of college? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, a lot of it is financial. Mm-hmm. Right, they get into college and then they go to these colleges and then they, you know, their parents can't help them. Yep. Right, they don't really know how to help themselves, yeah. and then the alternative is to leave. Yeah, to leave, start working, it's just so that you know you you literally come up with the decision. Well, am I going to make money or am I going to go to school? Right. And um, there were there were some people that I started off with freshman year um, in my in my cohort class yep. that by sophomore year didn't they, see them around. They was gone. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I don't know what happened to them, but I could assume that that it was either financial that it was either, you know, grades that right. they went on and did 
went on and did um, some other stuff, but but it's a challenge, you know, um, being being in being a first generation student. Yep. You know, um, there's there's there now I would say now there's a lot of um, opportunities to, to help to help first generation students navigate higher ed. Right. But um, before it really wasn't. Yep. You know, um, unless you qualify for for say like seek special program yeah yeah and where you get that extra support exactly yeah and then but you have to think about it what about the students that fall in between right that that don't qualify for those special pro- programs but but they still need they still need that help right and and like a lot of the programming um i did at baruch and i was fortunate to, to be a part of dealt with that you know right. because um we we invited all of the unrepresented students that were that were part of an income and freshman class right. and we worked with them for their whole year gave them that special attention that they needed right yeah so let's talk about because you know both you and i were, were part of NABA in college, right? So National Association of Black Accountants, the student chapters, and also did work with the professional chapters, you know? And we had a support system that said, hey, these are some of the things that you are going to encounter Mm -hmm. when you get to the professional world, especially one of financial services, right? And this, these are some of the tools to prepare you for that, right? So when I look back at that, I say, yes, there were a lot of tools and things that we did or that they helped us with that did prepare. Yeah. But it to me, it was just like, okay, yes, lot. I'm glad that I have that. I couldn't imagine not having this. Yeah. But there are still these other things that we have to deal with. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that, right? So coming from Baruch and, um, you know, going into this huge financial services firm as a person of color, right? And what are some of the things that you experienced that were like, boom, wake up, hey, Joe, like, this is, this is, (laughs) This is something that I'm not yeah. wasn't necessarily prepared for. It was very it was very interesting. Yep. Um towards the end of my tenure right. in um, financial services, um I had I had interaction with an MD that was she was a person, a lady of color. Yep. And um and another VP who was also a lady of color. Right. And there was a there was a black network event yep. going on, which um, which every firm has, right. and and I just so happened to be be on the committee for it, right. And it, I also think it was a it was a it was a NAB in New York event, right? Probably you know, reflect and inspire, yep. And I <laughs> invited them out yep. to it. I was like, you know, this would be great. A way to network across across the firm, right? You know, I want to meet new people, get inspired, and they literally said that, well, that's no benefit. <laughs> and I was taken back. I was right. like, well, what do you mean? There's not a benefit, right? You know, you you get to be with with people that look like you, right? In a safe space, individuals right. that that have. Um, going down this path before. Right. And and they're just like, well, you know, sorry. And that really kind of opened up my eyes to say, well, this may not be for everybody. Yes. But but it is needed. Right. But I was even more curious to find out why why they saw it saw it, um well why they thought that this event wasn't going to be um, important to them. Right. Was it because our big boss wasn't going to be there? Right. Or or was it because other people would, um, would ask them questions? I don't know why. Right. But but like regardless of um, where you go, 
you always you always need some type of support sir right um, support system right so let's talk about that for for a second mm-hmm. right like if 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 it's you and I having a conversation and I say well why do you think that is right so some of the the first things that come to my mind is black people in spaces that are dominated by non-black people yeah. don't want to be grouped in with black people right? <laughs> I, and it goes back I, and it goes back to what I was saying before in they're working at higher ed where everybody is an individual right and that the perception is that well all black people are are are, are um, low income right all black people are first gen right you know and you know that's a struggle you yeah. know and and as a as a black male you have to or or like um, um, a person of color, you have to kind of look past that. Yeah. You know, you have to try to think strategically, as as um, as um, Jay Z would say. You know, this is chess, not checkers. Right. You know, you you have to you have to think two moves ahead. You have to think. Well, all right. If this person is going to be there, and they have such and such power, right. hiring power that is. Or, or influence in the firm. Why not be in the same room as them, rub shoulders with them, and say, "Well, try to have that conversation, network with them, right? Just in case you ever need them, you could call them up, you can email them, and say, hey, this is this is what happened. Can right. you can you give me some some advice?' Right. But even you know, one thing that I learned there too was that there were those black people who were higher up that. You could go mm-hmm. or email and or call or they would meet with you, yeah. and then there were the ones who wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, and 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 it goes back to the question of well, why is that? And it's to me because they didn't want to be, you know, they didn't want to be looked at as the higher up black person that that's, that's helps, only helping that only helps black people. Yeah. Right, like they kind of try to stay away from that, so that their you know their peers aren't looking at them as oh you trying to you you know yeah. you're, you're just helping I mean, the, the the black people. But it could also be the crabs and barrel syndrome as well. Right, you know you you literally don't want to see somebody that looks like you advance themselves. Right, and you know that is. That has been been in our community for oh yeah for years and years and generations even up to, even to even now today. to now yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no that is so true because it's just like you know you will see people not support you you know you could be you know find a cure for cancer <laughs> right I had to think of such an extreme example right find it find a cure for cancer. And like, of course, you're gonna have your core yeah. supporters that yeah. are just like, "Wow, Joe, you cure cancer, you are the man." And then other people on the sideline with that that you know, looking at you. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. no congratulations, no, no nothing. Yeah. Um, but there's so many reasons that go into why yeah. people be you know behave in in that way. We um, go further well. together. No, yeah. we go for, um, further together. I think that regardless of where you are, there's no room for for um, internal hate, especially right. especially being in an environment that isn't conducive to your to your individual growth at right. times. Right. You know, um, you have to be able to to find that find that inner growth um, or people that will help you right. get to that. Get to that next level. Yeah. But you know, one of my struggles always has been, right, that balance between the lifting as 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 we climb, mm-hmm. right? And also looking at people as individuals. So let me explain what I mean by that. Mm-hmm. I get and especially now with what I'm doing, and even when I did work in finance. So many people would reach out to me. I want to have a job like you. I want to do what you're doing. I want to learn from you. Yeah. I want to be mentored by you. All of these things, right? And then when you engage them, 
you realize that they're not that serious. Yeah, yeah. I think that the one question you could always ask to kind of combat that and to filter it out so yep. that so that your time isn't right. wasted is ask them why. Right. Why do you want to have my job? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? Right. And sometimes, you know, the answers will be real, real genuine. You know, right. I'm in this I'm in this bad situation. Right. And I want to make it to the next stage. Right. Or, you know, I just like to flash. I, you know, I want to bag this girl. Right. You know, um, all these shallow, shallow excuses. And, and, and usually, you know, unfortunately, it, it's the shallow excuses. <laughs> It's the shallow excuses. And it's just like, so what I do sometimes if I actually do, you know, engage people mm -hmm. and give them my time, because before I would give tons of people my time yeah. until I started realizing, wait a minute. It's too much. This, not only is it too much, the, some of these people aren't really serious, yeah. you know? And like, so, so, you know, someone called my phone yesterday right and they asked me some questions about you know the the products that i sell and then they said hey i really want to you know be like you on instagram and you know so i started to break down to them what that really means and yeah. what is really involved and it is so much more than taking pictures and getting likes you know that's a like this, but it was, and, 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 and the part that really got them was when I told them that you have to invest money into whatever it is that you're trying to do. Like, you can't yeah. just say, I want to be an influencer on Instagram and wear suits, but you don't even want to pay me a hundred dollars to tell you how to do it. Shame. <laughs> Shame. Shame. Well, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, of course, right? Of then course. it's like, oh, oh, wait. You you want me to pay you for to teach me this? Nah, nah. Why can't you just tell me? Yeah. No, because I've had a hundred youths before who walk away and never do anything with the information. Yeah, yep. You know? So I always, you know, back to my point of I always struggle with the Wanted to help people, yeah. but then also being cautious because I understand that people get ideas in their heads, but once they realize the actual work that goes into yeah. executing those yeah. ideas, they're out of here. And it's okay. What I would say, what I would recommend is, you know, you have to be like Amazon eBooks. Right. You download a book. Uh -huh. Well, not really download a book. You could preview a book, uh -huh. only see a couple pages. Right. But then you have to pay to get the whole book. Right. Right. Take that approach. Right. Meet with them, give them a little snippet. Right. See what happens with that. Right. And then if, if they're serious about it, bring them back and say, all right, you know, let's take this, let's take this a little bit further. Right. You know, and now I think that that's, that's important, you know, right. nobody wants to waste their time. Right. You know. I don't, I don't like wasting my time. Um, I'm very, I'm more conscious about how I spend my time now. Right. You know, um, especially being in school, working, um, wife, other, and other responsibilities. Right. You know, I, I can't meet, meet with any and everybody, you know? Right. So I try to say, well, you know, you, let's just talk about something. Something basic, you get back to me when you're ready, or I may give you some homework to do. You know, right. you do steps one, two, and then, sorry. Yeah. You do steps one and two, and then you get back to me, and then let's just see what happens. Right. So, I've met with, I've met with people that I've only spoken, spoken to them once. Um, it was a great lunch. Right. It was a great lunch, great food, great conversation, but I haven't heard from them since. Right. But I know that I didn't give them everything. Right. I just gave them a give them, give them a nugget. A, a little nugget. Yeah. Yeah. And that's usually how, how I'll do it, right? Like it's 
And it's even how I run my Instagram. What people don't realize that I'm doing with the Instagram is I'm giving you a sample. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can't come in my DM and ask for the whole meal. Yep. You know? Like, you don't go to Costco and take a sample <laughs> and then pick up the box and try to walk out the store with it. You know? <laughs> You just you take your sample and then you say, mm, yeah. this is good. Let then you buy. make a decision as yeah. to whether or not you're going to buy the that's box. True. That's true. But you don't get to take the box out for free. Yeah. You know, and that's what a lot of people think. Yeah. They see me on Instagram and they, Instagram is a free platform. So they right? think that your services should be free as well. Right. So then they come in and they have what a whole long list. Hey, good brother. I love the work <laughs> that you do. <laughs> Hey, good brother, I love the work that you're doing. They set me up for the questions, right? And then it's like, let me let me just ask you a few things right quick. And it'd be like a list of people really just, yeah. They're, I'm the type of person that like, I like to just kind of be straightforward and yeah. just say what yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. Like my finesse game on some things, especially <laughs> when I get annoyed, it's just like, listen, um... Man. But you know, I have a I'm friend that's that. always telling me, you know, I have to, I have to finesse it more. He's like, you just be too straightforward sometimes yeah. with people. I'm like, well, they were straightforward with me, you know. You get what you so, get, right? So I want to talk to you about, um, about fashion, right? Sure. So you know, we both came up in, you know, Naba and having to wear suits and right and having to be in business casual and okay. going to conferences and doing presentations and all of these things. So we were groomed in a way that we knew, you know, how to tie a tie yeah. and, and, and all these things. But when it when did you first learn how to tie a tie? It had to well, when my dad taught me. Right. Um my dad taught me and my brother probably I was I had to be in early teens yeah and you know to go to church it was there was a t-shirt um, not t-shirt it was a it was a there was a tie every sunday yep and it was like all right tie to tie and i got tired of clip-ons and right and zip-ups and so he he first he would do it for us and then one one day i guess he just got tired of it right and then and then he did it and right. then he he taught all my other boys how to tie ties as well. Right. Um, who would you say, would you say that your dad is one of your early style influences or you would say your dad is... My mom. Okay, okay. My mom. My mom. <laughs> my mom. If you look, if we look at, look at the past albums, like childhood albums, right. you would see that, that my mom always made sure that my brother and I were dressed Right. Just nines right. on Sunday to go to church. Right. Any any special occasion, it was always my mom. All right. Do you think that? Um, I mean, I I I know the answer to this, but do you think that the way that you dress look has an impact on like your success? Yes, I, I definitely definitely do. You know, um, being a black male, you know. Um, when when I first started in higher ed and, right. start, and first started speaking to um, middle school and high school students, you know the the perception was always well, if if if, if a black man is in a suit, they're either going to court, yep, or or they're being drafted for for like a sports, <laughs> right? But nothing for but nothing for well higher ed, or I just want to look good. Right. Or I want people to have that certain level of um, respect for me. Right. So whenever I I go give a presentation, yeah, always in a suit. Um, right. Interviews, of course, always in a suit. Whenever I'm I'm meeting somebody for like the first time, yeah. Um, in regards to work or I'm personal, always yep. in a suit because I just feel it. Just you know, you you have that feeling. You right. know, like you feel as if. I look good. You look good, and it gives you that confidence. Yeah, yeah. Show, it, shout out to OT Genesis who came out with that song. I look like Bay. You should listen no, to that later. Okay, listen to that later. Um, I just ordered a T-shirt last night that's that says, uh, "Beards are everything," but it's Bay. 
Oh. You know, my beard is looking real raggedy right now because I'm so getting mine. ready for the weekend. So is mine. <laughs> I had to grow out some, so it's looking real raggedy. But I can't wait to wear that that t shirt. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, you know, there's there's a sense of confidence yeah. that that being that wearing a suit um, brings gives you. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I always tell people. I remember. Even from when I was in high school, I was a part of the Academy of Finance, mm -hmm. and I had like an internship at City. But we would—I was like the class rep, so we would go to these meetings at um, American Express, yeah. and I had to dress up, and I just felt important. Yeah, I just yeah, felt yeah, like yeah, yeah. somebody. And when people looked, the, people treat you different. Yeah. Like they people say, treat you different. Dress the way, dress the way you want to be addressed. Right, yeah. People treat you different when you, and that has always been, you know, one of my things. I just always loved, you know, like dressing, dressing up. Yeah. Um. So I'm not dressed up now for right, those right. who are, those who are living. <laughs> right, it's right. Summertime. Right. But he can get dressed up. He can get dressed. It's summertime, up. higher education. No students are on campus, so I'm very yeah. Very casual. casual, but you 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 put on your you put you put on your suit and your good toe when you need to. Yeah. Um. Do you own a custom suit? I do. I do. From our good friend Ruel, Mister Igami. Mister Igami. <laughs> He's about to be hype right now. Right. But, but yeah, he um he did. I have four suits from him. Yeah. Actually, and he he did the suits for my wedding. Right. So when you got your first one, because you got. Your first custom suit, relatively young. Yeah, yeah. You know, because most people don't get a custom suit until like adult, adult. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, not as like a college student. Yeah. yeah you that's know? True. So, for you at that time to invest money into yourself yeah. and, and actually get a custom made suit, yeah. like, that's that's a big thing. Yeah. You know, for, for me, I was entering, well, I was in corporate. But then, I knew I wanted to. I wanted. I wanted to stand out. Right. And um, you know, everybody could tell, as as you know. Right. You know that um, you have a you have on a custom suit. Right. And the first time I I wore my suit. Yeah. I I buttoned the first button <laughs> right. on my sleeve, and I was just walking around, and I was like, man, I. I look like Babe. Right. Shout out to OT Genesis. Right, right, like, right. It, like it was, yeah. it was a great feeling. Everything just fit, fit, fit perfectly. Right. I think the, the trouble is, yes. you know, if if you're like me, I love food, I right. like to eat. Um, I'm very picky right. when it comes to going to the gym. Right, and you know, you gain weight. Right, so it, it becomes a struggle. Yeah. It's a, to then like transition. I'm you know? glad that you went, brought that up. That is a really good point. <laughs> and that's what I tell people all the time is that people, you know, a lot of my clients, they come to me, they see me on Instagram yeah. and they're like, I want to, you know, I want whatever it is that you're wearing. I want to look like you. Yeah. But the reality of it is most people don't look like me, Yeah. you know, and people have curves, especially us, people yeah, of color, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we have curves and different bo body uh, shapes. I had a client that came last night and he was like, you know, I think I'm going to gain some weight. You know, so I was like, okay, well, before you get the suit, let's retake the measurements because yeah, I yeah, want yeah. it to fit right. And then even with the coat, it's like, okay, well, let's give like give a little room yeah. so that if your weight does case. fluctuate, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, you can still fit into yeah. it. But yes. That's the challenge with getting yeah. a custom suit is that, you know, if if you get it fitted and then you do go up in weight, yeah. it's much easier to take something in but than it is to take it yeah, out, let it yeah. out. Yeah. So, you know, it was, I remember the day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to put on my pants and I was like, I was like, hold on. I'm like, like what? Right. And I was like, I was like, oh my goodness. But, um... I remember for for one of my friends' wedding, I wore one of the custom suits, and I was just like, like, wow, right? It, it stood out, you know, right. and um, to know that you could look anywhere, and you 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 rarely ever see somebody in that particular design, right? You know, makes it 
Exactly. Oh yeah. Even if the person had the same fabric, the same buttons, mm -hmm. the same lining as you, it still wouldn't be the same. Yeah. Because yeah. yours is for your body. Yep. Yeah. So that that is that that is the beauty, um, you know, of it. But I think that you know, definitely having you know Naba as a part of your life. Yeah. Um, help to get you to where, where you know where where you are today in terms of that professional presentation For sure, sure right and that that's one thing so you know like you you know i used to do the dress for success presentations and things yeah. like that i actually did did one not too long ago but for um a different type of organization uh new york city men's teach oh. so it's like an initiative uh, to get more men of color yeah. into New York City public schools as yeah. teachers. Yeah. So I did like, uh, you know, a per it wasn't necessarily like a you have to wear a suit type of thing. Yeah. But we talked about body shape. We talked about <clears throat> knowing your measurements. We talked about um, the right kind of underwear to wear for your body type. We talked yeah. about all of these things that could affect your the way you look and your confidence and yeah. all of that stuff. And it was like a really... Um, a really good session but most people don't have access to it in that way yeah. right because all of the things we talk about are public information yeah, and yeah, online yeah. but it's just right? where to find it though where to find yeah. it right like it's sometimes a wild goose chase sometimes not right if you if you kind of know how to do keyword searches and things like yeah. that but it's very different than having someone right in front of you yeah. to share, the, and someone that looks like you. Yeah, and right? knows, yeah. So, 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 my first fashion advice from you that you may not even notice <laughs> was was back in college. Uh -huh. You said you told us, guys, whenever you wear a white shirt, yeah, or or like a light blue shirt, yep. wear a black undershirt right so that you know, right it looks complete and i've held on to that ever since right, right and this has to be at least probably like eight years ago right and you know i taught that to my brother right and, and to other guys that i know as well oh, yeah you know just because now looking at it whenever i see somebody in a white shirt and a white undershirt i get upset i'm just like <laughs> but, like come on man Listen, you know I, wanna, I told you. Listen, if I'm behind him, I want to punch him in the back. Of the head. <laughs> <laughs> it is, ooh, it 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 really upsets me. Yeah. But that is one of the things that tons of people don't know. Yeah. yeah um, yeah. and you know, they 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 just don't. They yeah, they they just no one ever taught them. Yeah. And they think that it's it's like acceptable. So I'm glad that you kept that with you because that is one of my like pet peeves and I'm just like, oh, oh, what were you doing? But yeah. then I have to realize they don't know. Yeah. They no, don't even, know. even in tying ties, you know, like correctly. Right. You know, um, my, my overall knowledge of, of knots isn't all that, you know, like deep. Right. I wish it was. Right. Um, um I've seen people come up with some crazy designs. Right. Get all type of, get fancy. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, I know how to tie a bow tie, and a lot of people don't. So yeah, boom. boom. <laughs> Listen, okay, now nah, that's a that's a big one too. Yeah, you know, and that's one of the things. Uh, towards the end of the workshop, I, I I bought a bag of ties, and some of them were bow ties, right? And I put an uh, infographic up on the screen mm -hmm. and said, "Try to tie, you know, try to tie this bow tie." Yeah. You know, like I learned from. You know, little card that I got from J. Crew. Yeah. You know, and and just kept trying it and trying it, and then boom, then I can do it. But that is a skill. Yeah. So people be like, I can't, I can't do it. Um, a friend in college he used to wear, he used to wear bow ties all the time, and I was going to a wedding, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm going to wear a bow tie. Right. I literally went to his, to his house. Right. We were. We spent probably about like a half an hour, forty five minutes. Right. Martin is teaching me how to how to, how to do it. The day of the wedding, I'm nervous. I'm right. there trying to tie it. It's not coming out. 
but my backup was a regular tie. Right. I said, you know what? I'm not wearing this right. tie. And I wore it. That was the first time I wore it out. Yeah. And from that day, right. always used to just pop out come up with a bow tie. Right. Everybody would just be like, hmm. Oh. Right. Because it makes you stand out. It does. Even more. It does. Even more. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, it, you know, it's, it's because you could tell the bow tie that are pre-tied. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. look they look away. You huh. know when someone tied it themselves. Right? Some more shade. <laughs> some, some more shade being thrown. <laughs> right. So Joe, had a great time with you. Tell everybody where they can find you. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm very professional. Yep. <laughs> don't don't look for me on IG. Right. Don't look for me on Facebook. You know, you'll be in the in the unconfirmed friend box for right. a while. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Joseph T. Wilson II. Um, love to connect with, with more people. Um, I do speaking engagements um, on on professional development. So definitely, if if you are if if the opportunity presents itself, feel free to reach out to me and we can connect. Right. So you know, again, I appreciate you being on. You know, we could have probably talked for a really long time. <laughs> okay. So yeah, but no, you gotta keep it professional. You don't want nobody coming in your DM talking crazy. Nope. None of that stuff. You you know, your anniversary coming up. You wanna <laughs> make sure that there's many more after that. <laughs> there will be. There will right. be. Right. Right. So my people, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the My People Podcast. Show us some love and subscribe to our show. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me, you can do so on Instagram at the underscore my people underscore podcast or by email at the my people podcast at gmail.com. So again, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on your listening platform. It's the wealthy guy and I'll see you soon.